Is there an exercise out there that is least fun to do? I think the good morning is probably the most uncomfortable exercise anybody can do. It's pretty much the position that nobody wants to be in. Shin bone, vertical, or even going backwards, knees back, fully bent over, bars on your neck, you're looking at the ground. It's pretty much the most the weakest position anybody can find themselves in. You don't want to deadlift like that. You don't want to squat like that. You just never want to be in a position like that. Even in a fight, if somebody's got you in that position, you're pretty much screwed. You can't strike them. You can't do anything. It's just a very, very weak position. Do we train it? Should we train our worst possible position? This is what I did today. I did 10 sets of 10 with good mornings, 60 kilos. It is a puny weight, but my God, does it feel heavy. Uh, it's not fun to do mentally because you're looking at the bar, you're like, well, this is a you know, tiny amount of weight for, for me comparing to what I can usually do with the deadlift and the squat. Uh, you unrack it, still feels light. And then you start to do the good morning and you feel the world just exponentially increasing the gravity uh, it's a kick-ass movement it's a kick-ass movement and i've done it many times over this journey of these three years um, and my mind automatically starts to really work hard to come up with excuses to come up with alternatives to this exercise let's do rdls man it's better <laughs> let's do block pulls Let's do anything other than this crap. This crap is uncomfortable. If you're not using a bar pad on your barbell, you're going to get a callus in the back of your neck. You can go low bar positioning, but that's making the exercise less effective. Why is it less effective? Well, because you're decreasing the lever, the moment arm. If you go into the low bar position, your upper back is taxing less. There's less thoracic flexion involved or the you know the forces for your thoracic extensors are less I've, I've, I've got this bar pad it's not really a bar pad i got it from the leg extension leg curl machine that i have i had a couple of those rolls chopped it up put it on it's fat as anything it's really uncomfortable but it's better than having the bar freaking straight on my c6 whatever c7 it is whatever the bone is so that's kind of bearable. Uh, it's really uncomfortable. Really, I would love to have an SSB bar, the safety squat bar. It's ideal for this. It's ideal. I don't have it. Last few days, I've been kind of wondering about it. Last few days, I've been thinking about, man, I'm, I'm, I'm actively thinking about how to support my overhead press. The overhead press is going to help my squat. Okay, how do I support the overhead press? What do I need to do to make this thing better? I've never used to think about this, but this is kind of like a mini project on the side. It also feeds back into my main goal, the squat. Overhead press supports the squat. Last few days, I haven't been in shape at all to do any sort of deadlifting. My calf is healed, but I still haven't done any proper deadlifting, any posterior chain work. I haven't done anything like that. I've done rowing, that's fine. I've done squatting, that's fine. But I haven't done any deadlifting. And then I thought to myself, what can I do to really get away with without taxing the living hell out of my system with sheer weight on my, on my spine? What could I do? And I thought about a 45 hyper. That'd be great if I have it. I don't have it. The very next door was good mornings. Let's do good mornings. Uh, good mornings is a great workout, uh, but it's one you have to respect and you want, and, and it's an exercise which, well, we've all heard the stories. You know, Bruce Lee snapped his back. Louis Simmons snapped his back. A million people around the world seem to have snapped their freaking backs doing this. I think you should not be loading this heavy. At least at least for many, many months of training this. Because it's it's kind of like, you know, you're walking, you're walking, you're walking, and then you fall off a mountain. You fall off a cliff. These are the forces, that's how the forces mount up against you. You're leaning over, you're leaning over, you're strong, you're strong, you're strong. And then you get to a position where you've kind of reached the end range of your hamstrings. And all of a sudden, you've like, you know, if you go a millimeter beyond that, you lost a lot of positioning and strength. And all of a sudden, you're looking like a fishing rod from the side. You're just really kind of in a compromised position, and this is where things go pop. So respect this movement. This will put you in a wheelchair if you don't, if you don't respect it. 
That doesn't mean we don't train it. You just have to go like sets of, I don't know, man. Sets of 10 is what I've been doing. Um, I have done sets of five. That's not a fun existence because it's very heavy. So sets of 10 to 20 is probably the best way to go about it. It's a great freaking feeling. You know, you feel the hamstrings, you feel the glutes, you feel the lower, mid and upper back. You feel all of that, you feel the core, obviously. And you don't really feel like you're training it until the next day. I've had this feeling many, many times. Like you do good mornings for the first time after many, many months. And then for the next three days, you got hamstrings that you can't even like sit down on the toilet. That's the effectiveness of the good morning. I rate it. It's, it's, it's very, very high up in my, in my respect of exercises. And I think it's probably the best, cheapest, if that makes sense, cheapest and most dangerous exercise. It's a lot cheaper than doing RDLs with 200 kilos for 5x5. Five five. Stuff I used to do start of this year. Appreciate all of you guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.